He coined the phrase biodegradable long before anyone knew what it meant or even cared. Today, phrases like natural source and environmentally friendly are marketing's favorite buzzwords. His products have been both for over 75 years. He was a doctor, an inventor, a philosopher, a preacher, an entrepreneur, and a visionary. A man who spent his life going against the grain of contemporary thinking. He was Forrest C. Shackley, and his was a life ahead of its time. The year is 1894. America is just emerging as an industrial power. It's been one year since Henry Ford built his first automobile. Next year, Marconi will invent the radio. And far away, in a small farmhouse near Carlisle, Iowa, a frail child is born. From the very beginning, Forrest Shackley struggles with life. The attending doctor diagnoses him with tuberculosis. No one expects him to survive the winter, let alone the next 91 extraordinary years. But survive he does. Much to the amazement of family and physicians alike, Forrest steadily grows stronger. But his recovery means spending long hours convalescing alone. On sunny days when other boys are either hard at work or hard at play, young Forrest can be found walking through the woods near his home. He observes animals and insects going about their daily lives, becomes fascinated by their keen instincts. He watches entranced as formations of birds migrate to the same spot every year without the aid of map or compass. It is then, no more than seven or eight years old, that Forrest has a profound realization. Animals listen to the voice of nature. Men have forgotten how. For the rest of his life, he remains attuned to the signs of nature's revelations. In this way, the boy learns what the man will need to know. Forrest doesn't allow his early setback to ruin his life. Instead, he uses it to his advantage. He helps gather plants and herbs his mother uses to prepare folk remedies that ward off illness. This early education in natural healing stays with Forrest. It's his first step on a journey into this powerful force. His destiny is unfolding. Ironically, it's a destiny that started with an illness he was never expected to survive. I'm very, very happy that early in my life, I accepted nature as my physician. And I tried to live in harmony with nature. And she's never let me down. 1913, the world verges on war. Tensions in Europe are mounting. In a few short months, the worst carnage in history will be unleashed. Forrest is 19. All signs of his earlier illness are now gone. But his life is forever changed. He cannot ignore the lessons learned in his childhood. Can't turn his back on the powers of nature he's been witness to. Later that year, Forrest develops severe back and abdominal pains. Worried, his family rushes him to the nearest doctor, where he's diagnosed with appendicitis. Given his past medical history, the family readily agrees to surgery. But in a move that would confound even modern physicians, Forrest refuses. Instead, he defies all the so-called experts and insists on being taken to see, of all people, a chiropractor. At that time, chiropractic was an extremely new and not very well understood branch of medicine. Forrest was interested because it promoted a natural approach to healing. His faith would soon be justified. The chiropractor discovers a dislocated vertebrae pressing on the nerve in his lower right abdomen. Once the vertebrae is put back in its proper position, the pain disappears. No surgery, no drugs. Forrest put his life on the line and won. But this wouldn't be the last time. Later that year, he enrolls in chiropractic school. It's 1921, and the world is recovering from the horror of war. Drunk on the ecstasy of survival, society runs wildly into a headlong transition from fear to frivolity. Life is celebrated to the fullest, sometimes in the unhealthiest of ways. Forrest has been a practicing chiropractor for five years now, but his interest in nutrition hasn't waned. 
He keeps detailed charts about his patients' eating habits, counseling them on proper diet, and stressing natural, healthy eating. He begins exchanging research with Polish biochemist Casimir Funk, who earlier isolated a natural substance he calls vitamin. Forrest is himself trying to process these vital organic compounds into what he calls vitalized minerals. But all this work comes to a sudden stop when Forrest is diagnosed with cancer in his left arm and leg. The doctor's recommendation is simple, straightforward, and final. Amputate. For the second time in just over 25 years, he comes face to face with a death sentence. But Forrest decides against radical surgery. I will live, he tells his wife. I will heal. I know I can do it. With these prophetic words, Forrest commits himself to act on his beliefs. He will put the healing powers of nature to the ultimate test, and he will be the guinea pig. For two years, he maintains a rigorous program of nutrition and blood analysis. He scours the countryside in search of the freshest fruits and vegetables. To this diet, he adds mega doses of natural vitamins and minerals of his own making. Four years after he started his own self-administered treatment, Forrest is fully recovered. There's no sign of the cancer that threatened him earlier. Conventional doctors are stunned. Forrest has proved them wrong again. He reopens his clinic and begins dispensing his own specially formulated food supplements for the first time. The same ones that helped save him from certain death. He has risked his life on his beliefs and won. He's now convinced of nature's healing powers and he's ready to share them with the rest of the world. We too have an instinct telling us what to do sometimes forcing us to do things that we don't want to do but if we listen to nature we would get along a whole lot better in this world it's 1929 and the party is over the roaring 20s are about to give way to the depressing 30s in a few months the american stock exchange will collapse triggering the worst economic disaster in history that same year, the Shackley Clinic burns to the ground. At a time when most people are worried about keeping their jobs, Forrest takes his in a completely different direction. He leaves it in a pile of ashes. Instead, he decides to concentrate on his nutritional research and buys a farm in Oregon. Here, he begins to unravel the mystery of nature and food. The fresh vegetables and herbs he grows in his own fields supply his experiments. This work soon inspires Forrest to again open a clinic so he can share his findings with patients. The year is 1931. The place is Oakland, California. Forrest is driven by an inner belief in his own work. Outside, he sees a world blindly embracing technological progress, where everything edible is either sprayed, processed, preserved, or packaged. Vegetables are being picked while still green. Fruits are being covered with wax coatings. Chickens are being injected with hormones. He wonders what this does to their nutritional content, or what it does to nature itself. He compensates for what modern life takes away by developing new and better food supplements for his patients. Soon, this becomes the focus of his clinic. While the rest of the country flounders through the 30s, the Shackley Clinic flourishes. Then, tragedy strikes. Dr. Shackley's first wife dies in a traffic accident. Forrest continues to run the clinic for two more years, but the loss is too much for him. The good doctor closes his doors and retires at the tender age of 49. The year is 1956, and the golden age of prosperity is well underway. Shackley has been retired for over 10 years. During that time, he meets and falls in love with a widow from Vancouver. Dorothy Porter. Next year, they will marry. Throughout the country, people are making the most of their new lifestyles. They buy products that make their lives more convenient. Fast food is just beginning to take hold. Nature, it seems, isn't relevant to modern living. And at an age when most people are preparing for retirement, Forrest Shackley comes out of his to found a new company. 
With his two sons and an $18,000 investment, Forrest begins a food supplement company at a time when the term is yet to be understood. But he sees an ever-growing need for nature's own remedies in this world. And typical of his against the mainstream life, Dr. Shackley realizes that retail is not the way to sell his product. Instead, he opts for a friendlier, more personable way to promote his products. Person to person selling. At first, his is a lonely voice in the wilderness. While the rest of the world is adding more and more chemicals to their products, Shackley introduces an all-natural food supplement called Prolessin. It's their first and only product. If people take only one food supplement, Forrest would say, this should be the one. When the world was relying on the pharmaceutical companies to make them feel better, Shackley introduced a herbal alternative. When most people were getting their vitamins and minerals in chemical form, Shackley developed a natural source supplement. And even as big soap companies were touting the use of phosphates and enzymes to get things clean, Shackley was introducing its first biodegradable cleaner. Soon, Basic H led to a full range of environmentally friendly cleaning products. This was Shackley's first venture outside the nutritional field. It was so successful, Forrest was inspired to move into cosmetics next. Shackley couldn't understand why women hid their natural beauty under layers of chemical-based makeup. So he introduced natural source cosmetics. Shackley's nutritional research also continues, but the simple labs of yesterday are gone. Shackley sponsors studies at major universities throughout the world. Today, Shackley markets a complete line of nutritional supplements for the whole family. Shackley does not request or require animal testing for any of its products. Although he died in 1985, Forrest Shackley's spirit shines on in the company he founded and in the products it sells. Thanks to his vision and his philosophy of the golden rule, millions of people around the world are leading happier, healthier, and more financially secure lives. That is why we celebrate his life, a life that almost never began 100 years ago this year. We're all truly grateful that it did. I am confident that the dream that began so many long years ago is being fully realized by those who have volunteered to continue my work. I wish to thank you all very much.